after that expensive repair at the uh, international in alberta one issue i've been having is not sure how this happened but they lost they say that's how they received the truck which i i don't believe but they say that my cap was missing from the washer fluid tank and i keep putting a plastic inside here and uh adding some you know some couple of rubbers but each time i open the hood they're gone and of course all this stuff flies in here which is not good so finally today we're gonna fix the problem was able to give me the answer I was looking for and so now we're gonna be driving we're going for a drive finally I have something to do because <laughs> these past couple of days I was just fooling around and specifically today is Tuesday uh, it's the first day after the uh, holiday because Monday was uh, Victoria Day in Canada so everything was closed see like this whole plaza was empty because Walmart was closed and of course Staples and Best Buy were closed but now they open but you see uh, like there's a guy walking towards it but there's a big bar in the front basically kind of like stop sign and the same in the Best Buy, so we have to... Oh, the guy goes in there. But I think somebody's uh, meeting them. Meeting... You cannot just walk. You cannot just waltz right in. You have to uh, stop there and tell them your business. And I think they will go and get you the, the part that you uh, ordered. Um... And yeah, basically over the weekend, I just drove back empty. Saturday, Sunday, I drove back and crossed the border. Because there's no point sitting in, you know, in the States, only 500 miles away. And they gave me a hard time at the border because uh, Canadian Customs never likes it when you uh, tell them that you were away for 10 days and you only went as far as Newark, New Jersey, like basically their attitude is like what were you doing for 10 days in Newark New Jersey like if you said that you were going let's say you went to California and came back right they understand that but they, <laughs> of course it raises suspicion you know what were you doing in the States and I said well I was I was uh, getting my trailer fixed under warranty and then uh, the part arrived only I delivered the load Monday right and when I had that incident in the port and then the part only arrived Wednesday the warranty part those brackets right and the trailer was able to go in the shop only Thursday right and that's it and then uh, I picked it up uh, Friday morning and spent one day pretty much in there after everything was ready there's no loads and I just drove back but I crossed into US Friday on the previous week and so Friday and then I'm crossing back Sunday you know so they said okay park your truck we're gonna look inside and I showed them my two receipts and uh, one was for the wheel repair 390 bucks the guy charged me for the steel rim uh, and then um, the second uh, the receipt was for the stuff I asked the uh, hail trailer to do some extra stuff beyond the uh, warranty and uh, finally they let me go but it took like half an hour they searched the truck top to bottom 
of course didn't find anything I didn't do anything illegal it's just that I was in the States I said there's no loads what do you guys it's uh, you know we have the pandemic right but the good news is that now they're reopening the economy at least in Ontario slowly like in stages just like they're doing in the States and uh, uh, the good news today is that all the construction industry is opening up today in Ontario and because my work is uh, directly related to construction and so if people don't do construction nobody's moving any construction machinery like excavators and those and stuff like that and uh, some guy was texting me about my 36 inch flip box so I don't know if he's gonna send me a check or not he was saying that sometime this week he'll text me when the check is in the mail so if that happens that's cool I was thinking maybe investing that into uh, like finding a shop that can uh, install you know a cylinder in there so that I don't have to hire anybody to flip the neck because that neck you know it's seven feet tall so it's really a hassle to flip it even with a with a excavator or loader so everybody I know who has these long necks they use a hydraulic flip right since I already have the hydraulics right just hook up uh, another valve in there install a cylinder and I can do it myself and also the truck has been uh, pulling slightly to one side uh, probably three four months now I think I hit a pothole or something, you know, especially when I have a heavy load. Uh, I have like 17, 18,000 on the front, front axle, and you, you know, you hit a pothole even at like 90 or K an hour, 56 miles an hour, it can, it can do some damage, right? And I think I hit one of those potholes somewhere in the States, and I noticed that the truck started pulling towards the curb, towards the ditch. And the wheel turned, you know, like normally, of course, it should be like this, but the wheel turn was like this when you drive straight. And what I did is I, I went to Cal Tire over here and I asked him to just switch the wheels, like the whole wheel and tire assembly, just put the right one on the left, left one on the right. I thought, you know, uh, maybe just the tire. And I was right because the truck started pulling to the left now. Like I'm in the curb lane, which is, of course, it's tilted, right? So. Uh, normally it, it would be pulling the truck to the ditch if your alignment is not compensating but now when I put the tire on the left it started pulling me to the left even from the from the curb lane and I waited I waited it slowly the tire of course uh, became better and now it's almost straight just a very slight pull to the left almost you know basically almost perfect but the wheel is still like this you know when you're driving straight it really irritates me when the wheel is like this and another thing is uh, I don't know if I'm just imagining things or maybe the they didn't hook up the, the neck uh, properly but when I'm driving and I look in the mirror and of course you know these mirrors are very different like the left side the left side shows a different picture than the right but when I'm driving and I'm looking at this part of my fender in relation to the trailer like normally this side should be like right here somewhere where this line is and for some reason I, again I don't know if I maybe this was like this all the time but for some reason on this side I see more like the, the that uh, edge of the fender is here but on this side it's like over here you know like as if the trail is going sideways you know then I was looking here and you can see slightly like the way the neck is connected like here is pretty much touching this weld right just over a couple of millimeters over this weld but here it's this way so I think it's the neck so I think when they connected the neck because I have this long neck extension when I left the trailer at the hail trailer, the way they connected, it's probably not not exactly equal. Like you see this part over there and this part over there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I can see that. Like this part, this edge. 
until like this edge let's say five millimeters here right away from the edge of this you see this the top like half of my fingernail but on this side you see it's it's much closer so the neck is uh, like that side so I think that's what happened so no big deal so I thought and you see here it's almost touching but not touching and here it's bigger the gap is bigger so yeah that's what happening but so I was afraid that maybe you know my trail is out of alignment because uh, the guy hit me in this axle but I think it's fine just you know once I flip the box I can attach the neck properly well it's attached properly just it's a bit off to one side and uh, and here it's not exactly equal either so but now that I know how to use it I feel confident with this so that's my setup for running empty it still needs these two shims and over here I'm on one two three four five six and then it's fine it's not trying to oversteer the trailer but when I'm loaded I'm putting one more of these big ones and then I'm gonna put a small one like one fourth or one eighth of an inch and then of course increase it here and uh, Let's go for the for the errand. Get our cap. Because yeah, I'm really tired of driving like this. Without that thing, you know, keeps spilling inside the engine compartment. Not good, you know. All right, let's go for a little test drive and then later I'm expecting I'm expecting a call. From Steve, the guy with a crane. Well, I don't think we're gonna do anything grain today but I asked him to uh, move that uh, flip box right because I picked it up uh, last week uh, from JC trailer and I, when I brought it down I thought I could drag it I thought I could drag it towards the uh, towards the rear managed to do use was right lane to turn slightly right onto water the regional road 24 then use the right lane to take the Ontario 401 West Rail so all I managed to do was uh, drag it off the trailer that thing is so heavy you know that uh, 36 inch flip box that I'm trying to sell now it's uh, they were telling me Fontaine told me when I was picking this up right they told me it was uh, Uh, 550 pounds and they were not joking because when <laughs> I dragged it off the trailer but once it fell down that's it I could not move it I just barely moved it and of course it has a kingpin underneath right and so that kingpin without the kingpin maybe I could have moved it a couple of feet but with the kingpin sticking into the ground it was impossible and so I asked Steve I said you know I know you have a small forklift 
have a skid in there so I'm gonna give you the skid can you just load this thing on the skid and just put it in the back so it doesn't take space because uh, I, I still have one spot where I usually go north of Kitchener here and of course they're busy they always need uh, three or four days and um, we agreed on uh, Thursday the day after tomorrow 12 o'clock and I said how about if I bring you the trailer Well, if you want to bring the trailer, then he says, it's, so let's do it Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I said, no, 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 no. Uh, I can wait till Thursday, but I need to find a load. So uh, I said, I'll do the trailer. I'll do the trailer later. And what you hear, of course, I'm in my Dodge Challenger. 6.4 and that's the Flowmaster Super 10. I'm extremely happy with uh, with this upgrade. what Google Maps was saying that uh, this cherry blossom is closed and this is where I spent this is Maple Grove Road this is where I spent I see the sign says no right turn I spent the first first three or four years and that's where we're going Kenworth I spent the first three four years of my uh, trucking career at this place over here behind this hill there's a Challenger you see this big yard Challenger motor freight I still remember them with gratitude because they were the guys who gave me a chance a rookie driver with no experience right after the right after the driving school the reality of uh, COVID-19 I come to Kenworth right <laughs> and there are signs everywhere stop stop do not enter the building under any circumstances and basically they're telling you to call and the guy didn't tell me when i called on the phone the guy says yeah we have 10 of them i said okay i'm gonna stop by i said in the next hour and pick them up and the guy says okay and he never told me about this 
So now the service entrance, there's a you know, stop sign, there's a parts entrance, stop sign. And you call them on the phone. And uh, the guy came out, no mask, no gloves, standing two feet away from me. Like, what's the point? Why, <laughs> Why cannot go inside the building? So you still come out and you talk to me. How are you gonna pay? I said they'll pay with the, you know, debit tap. And uh, he grabbed some. He grabbed two of the caps, but they're black. I don't know if they're the proper ones. And I said, can you please verify? So I gave him my uh, gave him my uh, last uh, seven digits of the VIN number. And he went back to verify that these are the proper ones. And uh, also I said, if you have this, please check if you have uh, those uh, packs, you know, grease packs for the fifth wheel. Because they're, they're pretty expensive at, uh, at uh, truck stops. But what I do is I drop, uh, I drop the suspension on the truck and then I raise the trailer a little bit and then I can see a gap uh, you know above the fifth wheel and I can just push these bags in there and reinflate suspension because you know the fifth wheel grease helps with the steering and uh, wear and tear you know it's very important so dollar uh, fifty each Three dollars plus thirty-nine cents tax. Three thirty-nine Canadian. And so I got two in case I lose one again. All right, let's go back and do the install. No instructions were supplied for the installation, so it might take us a while. Now this is, uh, of course, business expense. So it's all tax deductible and government of Canada will pay me back 39 cents I paid for the sales tax. So very chilly today. Plus 10. 50F and by, by the way this is the um, also this is the location where I got uh, where I bought my truck uh, from the sales guy I worked with was on the first floor here And then he got promoted to the, he went to the, sorry, I was just checking for your recording. So then he was promoted and he started working in, in the corporate office. I started dealing with the other guy.
that's power, torque, g-force oil temperature So the red one is power, torque, yellow is torque, and blue one is oil pressure. Maybe I'll leave it on this one. But, uh, this one shows power and torque only. That's the entrance to a Challenger. I used that gate many times. And you come in, there's security at the gate. And each time you come in or return after a trip, you have to go through the shop. shop and so they inspect everything after each trip even though it's a local trip and they have fuel pumps right there so you can get fuel and they check your tires they check your brakes Dispatchers like each dispatcher or a fleet manager or what they call them, driver manager. Driver manager had I forgot 10 drivers, 15 drivers. And I was just a company driver, so they gave me a first truck was a Volvo. seven or eight years old and then second truck second truck I uh, persuaded them to uh, give me a brand new truck and they were like what your second truck you already want a brand new truck and I said yeah why not and they 
give me a Freightliner Freightliner Columbia with the automatic transmission brand new but that truck was sitting I, I don't think anybody wanted to drive that truck and so that truck was sitting brand new never used for like three or four months and when I picked it up it had all kinds of problems the first one being the um, air suspension that crazy truck had air suspension on the front axle and the truck was sitting like this you know crooked like the left side was lower than the right side <laughs> and I'm like what is this and they had to send it to the Freightliner dealer Something was leaking somewhere. And then it had issues, it had issues with the uh, transmission. Uh, but that was like 2007, 2008. Back then those transmissions were not, you know, very reliable. Now it's 12 years later. And I know a lot of heavy haulers that use um, Eaton 18 speed uh, aut automated transmission or automatic transmission and they work fine but back then I remember with the 40,000 pounds in the inside the drive and trailer I I could not back there was a slight heel The truck just didn't want to, you know, move. Everything is pr proper, like re reverse, and the truck just stuck. and with 40,000 pounds in the in the box the truck refused to move and I had to come out I said guys I'm sorry I said I'm sorry it's taking me so long but I said I said it's a freight liner with the automatic transmission so basically what do you want <laughs> they all started laughing oh Freightliner okay oh automatic transmission yeah my late dad uh, never liked uh, bikes he was always saying that Два колеса между ног Это не машина special um, public transit signal on top of the red light you see this bus now is turning it is a white signal and that's only for the buses so the bus can turn on that red signal because it has the white line above it and, I, <laughs> and I'm going there I have to go to this Walmart right and I wish I really wish they would make that turn 
you know legal for everybody because you have to come here and this is the most annoying intersection in Cambridge because it's so long takes so long for the signals to change and it's two lanes turning left And so I just wish, you know, sometimes I look at that intersection, I'm like, maybe I should take a chance? No way. Because it's a red, right? It's a red light, just the white bar above it says, you know, for public transit. And, okay, now we have flashing left, left signal. And, of course, we're not going to make it. Just to get into that Walmart, into this Walmart parking lot, right? I have to go through, what was it, like three lights? Like on the bridge, right? There's like a bunch of lights. Whereas uh, when you're coming from 401, there's only one light and you, are, you go straight and you end up right over there at Best Buy. So it's actually, it's much easier, much quicker to enter this area from uh, 401 uh, eastbound. And over here it's all turn signals and then uh, stop signs. without instructions difficult
all right so now i at least i feel like i did something good today <laughs> we'll do we'll do another video if i uh i don't know when uh the crane guy is gonna call me probably after lunch oh but i do see there's actually lots of people walking in and out out of staples so it doesn't look like it's the same system as before where you had to wait in line and then each person had to talk to somebody so maybe they did open up what about walmart usually there's like a line up there outside of the store yeah there still is people are waiting to get in line because they only allow so many people inside the store and ever since i came back i have not been inside that walmart in two or three weeks because it's such a crazy system because i can go across the freeway and there's a big grocery store zares and there's no lineup in there because walmart of course a lot of people are not going there to buy food they're going there to buy you know clothes electronics you know, kinds of supplies i don't need that anyway so that was a quick update so yeah so everything is fine and back in canada as you can see and just uh waiting for the alignment and uh meanwhile we'll be looking for the load and hopefully the economy is uh is uh, gonna restart and construction is open as today in in ontario so i feel optimistic